How's everybody doing? And thanks for tuning in. My name's Tommy, and this is the Gallery Backyard Barbecue. And what I'm going to be doing, taking a big old rack of dino rib, slow smoking it at 275 degrees to toothpick tender. Then I'll take it out, rest it, then we'll wrap it in puff pastry and bake it at over 500 degrees. It's the Dino Rib Wellington coming up next. This is the Gallery Backyard Barbecue, and we got an action-packed show for you today with some uh, basic prep. So, uh, well, so let's uh, rock and roll and get that done. Of course, oh, yeah, of course. And we got a, a nice a three-bone dino rib. If you've never had these, contact your local butcher, or you can uh, send away for a mail order. These are definitely uh, worth it. Definitely worth it and now we do have a little a silver skin up top okay unlike the uh, pork ribs or even the uh, smaller beef ribs we got a silver skin up top but that uh that we got to get rid of right that does us no good that won't render and it will only block our rub so uh, that's got to go and basically what you want to do here is just uh, get in there and tilt your knife forward and up and uh, just uh, saw away, right? Try not to get a, a lot of meat with it and make sure your knife is sharp, of course. Yeah, you got that sharp knife. And now you can uh, leave some fat on there, right? That'll render nicely. And on the uh, back, we want to uh, get rid of that uh, chunky fat that does us no good. But we are gonna leave the uh, silver skin there to uh, hold the, the ribs together, right? We'll get rid of that later. Now basically I'm going with a uh, course which is a, a thick uh, salt, pepper and garlic. That's it. You can use your own rub but uh, I like to uh, keep it uh, simple on this uh, beef ribs. I like the uh, beef uh, to uh, shine through right. It's a, a nice uh, beef flavor and I like to uh, I like to get a good taste of that of course. And now again on this uh, on a big piece of meat like that you want a nice uh, chunky uh, coarse rub right you want a uh, thick black pepper and you want a uh, thick salt grain right next up we're gonna go with a little uh, garlic powder and that's it now you can use a, a binder I chose uh, not to right of course and you definitely want to uh, get uh, all sides of the uh, beef and a uh, little on the back why not not going to do us any good, but uh, I guess it's just a habit. Of course. Now on a, a big a slab of beef like this, I like putting that uh, peach of butcher paper down, applying my rub, wrapping it up, and letting it sit for a half hour to an hour, right, while I... Uh, I like tend to the pit, right? That'll get that uh, salt in there uh, nicely, of course. Oh yeah, that's a good tip. That uh, peach paper, right? Of course. I like that. That's a good tip. Mm -hmm. Now on the uh, pit, we're going to be running it at a 275 uh, for the whole cook until we uh, darken up our uh, puff pastry, and uh, you'll see that later, right? Now once you're uh, once your pit reaches uh, temperature, you'll uh, unwrap your beef ribs, of course. Oh, 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 yeah, look at that. Yeah, of course. I mean, what does one say? It's beautiful. And then uh, get them placed in the uh, pit, right? That's easy. Now we're basically going to run this for about an hour, two hours, whatever, and give it a, a little spritz, right? And at that time, what you like to do is uh, uh, check the meat for any uh, hot spots in the grill where maybe it's uh, burning a little bit, and you'll uh, and you can turn the beef at that point. Oh, yeah, it's a two-hour spritz, right? So spritzing. Now I'm just using a uh, apple juice uh, broken down with a little water, probably a 50-50 spritz. 
I've used a Dr. Pepper, I've used a Coke, or you could use anything you'd like, right? Just be careful with the amount of sugars in the uh, spritz that you will put on it, because uh, maybe it will burn, of course. He said 50 apple juice. He said 50 spritz, right? 50, 50. Now, the uh, one good thing with these... Uh, with these pit boss uh, verticals is that a glass, right? I get to uh, peek right through that glass and uh, see what's doing. Oh yeah, I like that, I like that. And uh, what's doing is uh, we are looking mighty fine. And we're looking to be about a 155, so I know we got about another, uh, I'll just say about another half hour to 45 minutes. The uh, three and a half hour mark, and we will do a, a little uh, spritz, right? You want to uh, keep that meat nice and moist, of course, as you uh, develop your uh, bark. see we are at the four hour mark and we are 165 degrees wow. and that's uh, where you want to be right before you uh, wrap up the beef and you can run it straight through without wrapping it up but uh, I like to wrap it up so I wrap it even a burn on all sides of the beef and that's what you want we got nice pullback on those uh nice pullback on those bones of four yeah. hours <laughs> yeah and you can see that a large a grain of pepper and salt forming nicely, right? That is all a flavor. Oh, that's good stuff. Mm. Right, and basically here, because of it's uh, such it's uh, big uh, beef of beef, I am going to use a tin foil and a peach butcher paper. And I am going with a uh, Worcestershire sauce, a little Worcestershire sauce, and I'll use a, a little teriyaki sauce. Now you can, uh, you can not put anything in there, but I'm going for a, a good steam inside because I want those bones to come right off to uh, prepare my uh, puff pastry, right? So uh, that's the way I'm going to roll. this sucker up you want to get a, a nice uh, tight wrap uh, you don't want anything uh, leaking uh, through so uh, whatever you got to do to uh, get that is what you got to do I'm using a couple sheets of uh, aluminum foil and I'll even use uh, two pieces of uh, peach butcher paper right you got to do what you got to do Now you can uh, probe this with a uh, thermometer to uh, monitor your uh, temperature, but I, uh, well, I choose to uh, check it every half hour or so. That's no big deal. I know we're looking at about another two hours here. Now we want to take that meat all the way up 
between 200 and 205, otherwise known as a toothpick tender, right? Toothpick tender, of course, of course. And we are moving nicely. We are at the five hour mark and we are 180 degrees, right? Oh yeah, we are, of course. And as you can see, we still got a little uh, resistance in that meat. You want that uh, that a uh, beef a toothpick tender, right? Toothpick tender. That's a tooth. You want it to uh, move through that beef like a butter. He said, "Like a butter." And we are at the uh, six-hour mark, and uh, as you can see, we are approximately 191 degrees. And I like to uh, pull it over 200, right? So we got about another hour. All right, we are moving along quite nicely, quite nicely. Alrighty, and as you can see, we are 203 degrees, so we are ready to rock and roll and get this beef off and get it rested. And as you can see, we're also probing like butter, that thing comes out no problem. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Alright, and what I like to do here is I like to wrap it in a... Uh, Wrap it in a couple sheets, right? And I like to get it in the oven to rest for at least an hour to two, right? Something you could use a cooler if you'd like. It's no big deal. Mm. And you want all those uh, juices to settle, right? Oops, got my and a bing a bang a boom just like that two hours and we got a, a total of uh what does nine hours into this cook and uh i'm pretty sure it's going to be well worth it now be careful here because that uh, beef is still hot And uh, there we go. Now from here, what we want to do is we want to get that on the board, right? Because we want to remove those bones, right? If we left those, uh, well, if we left those bones in and tried to wrap it with puff pastry, it'll only poke through, right? So uh, they gotta go. And notice that a large grain of salt and a pepper. Wow. Oh, man. All right, as you can see, all uh, well, those bones come right out, don't they? Don't get much easier than that, right? Alrighty, and from there what I like to do is get a, a sheet of a peach butcher paper down, flour it up, and get that up. We'll get those puff pastry squares on there, right? This makes for easy a cleanup, right? So you have pro tip, Chris, of course. Now, because the uh, size of this uh, beef, you're going to probably use a, a whole a sheet. If this was uh, the uh, regular uh, beef Wellington with a flame and young, you would use uh, you'd use a quarter of that now, wouldn't you?
and from there you want the uh, good side uh, down right because that's the uh, side that's going to be up and uh, what I'm going to do here is just uh, well I'm going to get rid of some of that grizzle and some of that uh, silver skin and fat on the bottom that'll do us a no good right so that stuff has got to go and uh, rest assured my uh, Molly uh, sunshine will uh, be eating good tonight all right, that's my little black lab, of course. Of course, and Molly Sunshine. Oh, she's a good girl. Of course. Yeah, she's a good girl. Good girl. There you go. That's no big deal. And you can see that stuff just cuts off like butter. Alrighty, from there you want to uh, just kind of fold it in, right? You're going to uh, seal the beef up in the uh, puff pastry, right? Just to be careful not to uh, rip it if you can. If you do, no big deal. It's okay. And as you can see, I got that little hole, so I'm just going to flap another piece on there. Again, no big deal. I'll move that onto a uh, tray, right? There you go. And we'll get that uh well, we'll get that brushed down with some melted butter, right? You could use butter or you could use uh you could use an egg. I need it more. Now a, a little trick here on those little flaps. If you put a little butter on there, well that'll work as like a glue and that'll hold that together. And now I'm just going to put a couple stragglers on top, right? I like to uh, pick at these things after it's cooked, so uh, that's what I'm going to do. So you'll go 450 to 500 on the pit until you're browned, and that'll probably take about 15, 20 minutes, but keep a good eye on it, right? And one cool thing about the uh, pit boss vertical is you got that glass, right? So I could just peek in there, I know what's going on. And there you go, we're about, uh, I think it was about 16, 17 minutes, and uh, you could see we're ready to uh, come off, of course. And uh, there it is. Wow. I can tell you that is packed with juice and packed with flavor. See, we got a, a pretty decent smoke ring, and uh, wow. This has taken uh, beef ribs right up to the uh, next level. You serve this to uh, your family, and you are uh, looking like a king. And what I like to do here is do about half inch slices, right? Wow, I would think two slices per person will uh, do you. And you can see that, uh, well, you can see that moisture inside that meat, that uh, where that fat rendered, that is packed with flavor. You can see that uh, meat is a uh, pull apart tender. Now listen how I like to serve this, like I said, is a good half inch of slices, a two slices per person should do you, right? I'm 
serving this with a uh, little corn bread, right? Homemade corn bread and uh, some slaw also. And as you can see, uh, that uh, smoke ring is uh, looking pretty good, right? Alrighty, and as I uh, bow out of this, uh, bow out of this uh, show, out of this uh, cook, out of this uh, video, right? I'd like to uh, thank my subscribers, new and old. Please leave a uh, comment. It's good for the show. Please leave a uh, thumbs up. It's good for the show. YouTube likes that. And until next time, next video, next show. We will see you soon.